Let's, Let's do one more. In the name of giving, in the name of Christmas, in the name of, of our lineage and our friends and our family and our community and our world. Amen. Cheers. Well, to you, brother. To you. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hello, I'm Phil Hendry, and today we'll be discussing the man who created modern Christmas, Charles Dickens. Holy shit. Yeah, man. Thank you, Phil. Let's go for it. Thanks, brother. So Charles Dickens is a smash hit in England. He's a very, very prominent writer, and he's sitting there thinking, I don't know, I've, uh, I've written uh, Nicholas Nickleby, The Old Curiosity Shop, a thing called Oliver Twist. <laughs> now he wanted to speak about the, you know, the degenerating uh, aspects of English society. English society is a big hovel. It's a steaming mass of just whew, And you've got poverty and, the, and, the, and the, the, the ragged schools. And the people are like, that's really great, man. You've got another Oliver Twist. I'd really appreciate it because, man, you are boring me. <laughs> Suddenly, everybody's leaving. So now his publishers don't want to publish him. The people are not all that interested in his political points of view because he's a long-winded, dull creep. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay. And suddenly, in 1843, out of the blue comes an invitation. I say, sir, you're invited to the Athenium of Manchester to come and convey, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. So he goes up there, he sees the big sign. The Athenium of Manchester. It was actually a place where the working class and the poor could go to hear educated people speak. So he gives his speech, and he looks out across this vast sea of, pace, of, the, of paces. Oh, man. Woo! <laughs> Holy shit, dude. And it is then that it hits him. You are the regular people, the working people, the, the people of England. But the man that I see is overseeing all of these people that I'm looking at tonight, he's an asshole. Is That's the word, yes. I'm looking for the word asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And that night he went out and he walked and began to think about this tale. My God, I saw in the face of those people, I saw the very working man. I saw the man that I was and the boy that I was. Those are the faces of all the suffering people that I've been working with. Yeah, you're my people, aren't you? Yes, sir. In his mind he's doing this, it's not really happening. Oh, and, okay. Uh, <laughs> So it began to coalesce in his mind. He goes back to London, and he's beginning to put this together in his mind with the time of year. Well, this is the birth of Christ, isn't it? This is Christmas. He's thinking about uh, love and charity and, and how all of that's missing in this world that he'd been living in. And Dickens suddenly got the idea for a tale of the working class coming in touch with this redemptive spirit of Christmas. And he says, I saw the man that was keeping them down. Ebenezer Scrooge. And his sister had a, a little boy who had what was called tuberculosis of the bone. Tiny Tim, he's thinking about this tale of these three ghosts. That was the Christmas spirit of whatever the f happened before. It's the Christmas spirit of the future. The Christmas spirit of now. And he keeps writing, and he keeps writing, and he keeps writing until his hand gets tired. And he looks and he sees a Christmas carol. Charles Dickens writes A Christmas Carol in six weeks. Right away. Gone. Yeah. Wow. Gone. Chuck Dickens, Charles, if you will. I will. Went to his publisher, and the publisher said, Chuck, you haven't had a hit, baby, in years, man. I'm not going to publish this. So he leaves. He goes home, and he's thinking, this is impossible, man. All these guys are telling me the same thing, that I stink on ice. Bull, I'm going to self-publish. Yeah, that's right. He has John Leach, who was a very well-known illustrator, do the illustrations. I'm going to go ahead and bind this stuff up. I can put it in multicolored paper. I can give it a little kind of a flash, give it a little, uh, you know, a little, a little sell. They print 6,000 copies. Bang, sells out. It was a hit. A Christmas Carol is uh, virtually internationally renowned. His fortunes take off again, and he begins to perform A Christmas Carol all right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Dickens. Hey. Thank you, thank you. Let me get my glasses. All right, here we go. A Christmas cow. You mind? Anyone? All right, here we go. One, two, and a one, two, three. 
a Christmas carol. One night, <laughs> it's all f***ed up, excuse my language, and begin. A Christmas carol, I'm Charles Dickens. Suddenly, the ghost of Christmas present becomes the ghost of Christmas past. And Tiny Tim... <laughs> and Tiny Tim came bouncing down the lane. And he said, Father, I'm crippled. And Bob Cratchit said, no shit. What else is new? <laughs> Are we still doing the show here? <laughs> anyway, with the publishing of that book, he reinvigorated the whole idea of Christmas as a time of gift giving and a time of embrace, a time of warmth, a time of sharing. And by the way, Christmas Carol was released on December the 19th, 1843. That's 174 years to the day tonight. Cheers to Charles Dickens. To you, man. To you. Mm-hmm.